Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to Sunday Brunch. It is the 25th of October. This is the first Sunday I haven't had to check the date um, because I know the date because it's the day I was born. Um, so thank you for all coming out on Zoom and hanging out with me this morning. There's nowhere I'd rather be on my birthday. And I think we are now on week four of the 12 week um, Sunday Brunch self-development program in the run up to Christmas. So I hope that you've been getting value out of this so far. Um, if this is your first call, then the way that these calls work is each week is on a new segment in what's kind of called like our circle of life. So today we're looking at home environment and the effects that that can have on your mental well-being and your productivity. And hopefully you'll go away after this call with some just one thing that you can start implementing to um, improve your, your home environment, which is then going to improve other things. Um, and what I want you guys to know at the beginning of this call is that Improving your home environment is not something that happens overnight or in a week or in a month. It can take up to a year or even longer to start making these changes. Um, but there is so much value I'm going to give you, so many different areas that each one of you can, can take, to, um, take away with you to look at. Because we're bio-individuals, which means uh, one thing that is going to really work for me to change is going to be totally different for someone else. Like, for example, you might be someone, you might be one of the rare people who actually really thrives in a cluttered space. And it's not going to be beneficial for you to go and declutter and organize your space because you actually enjoy that. So that's just an example of how we are bio individuals. Um, but anyway, a lot of what we do on this call is going to give you an insight into that. So the first thing I wanted to read out, because I was just doing a little bit of research this morning, um, and I couldn't find any statistics. I'm sure if you researched it more, you probably could. I wanted to understand the actual link between a home environment and your mental well-being. Um, and although I couldn't find any statistics, there are quite a few studies. And um, there's, there's obvious things like if you're in a place which is quite badly lit, that isn't very good for your mental well-being. That's why in the winter, people tend to get more depressed than they are in the summer because of the darkness. And um, light is a stimulant for us and it does make us feel good. Um, there's also things like if your laundry hasn't been folded for three days and every time you go to bed, you're kind of looking at it, you're subconsciously making, you're creating stress because it's another day where you're like, oh, I need to do that. I need to do that. So there's things like that. Um, and there's also things like, like loud noises. If you live in a busy city, that can really affect your mental well-being because you've got that constant uh, background noise, which you can't shut off. And actually something that was really interesting um, is the clutter, the effect of clutter on mental health may be worse for women in particular. And um, a study that was done in 2010 found that wives who considered their home cluttered had higher cortisol levels during the daytime and women who didn't think their house were cluttered had decreasing cortisol levels which is obviously linked to stress and things like that so I, I don't know if that's something you want to do further like maybe after this call you want to go and do a bit of research yourself and look at the statistics but there definitely is a link between your mental well-being and your home environment so you probably knew that already. Now we're going to look a little bit more in detail in, in the kind of things that you can do to improve it. Um, so first of all, I want everyone to write down in your notebooks, in your self-development books, is um, just a couple of sentences describing how your home environment currently makes you feel. So when you think about the place where you spend most of your time, how does it make you feel? And you may want to do this if you work long hours. Um, like you're in a location that is your, your workspace and you are there more than you are at your home, you might want to do it for that or you might want to you might want to have two sections here. And the reason I say that is because I know that some people spend more time in the office than they do in their own house. Um, so you choose, but describe your current home environment in a couple of sentences. How does it make you feel? We won't spend too long on it. So if you want to just jot down like um, words rather than sentences, that's fine as well. So then the next question, I want you to envision your ideal home environment and how is it different to where you're currently living? So again, just jot down a few words, write down a couple of sentences. Um, and how do you want to feel mentally, emotionally and physically? 
So when you're describing your ideal home environment, you can use images, you can use smells, you can use feelings, sounds, like just jot them all down, anything that's coming to your head. Like when you imagine somewhere where you'd be really, really happy and really content, what does it look like? What does it feel like? So just keep writing down some words and phrases that I'll give you um, maybe 60 more seconds to do that. <clears throat> What I want you guys to know as well is um, your current home environment might not even feel like a home right now. Like I've, I've traveled, or I actually think I've lived in maybe 12 different places in the last two years since I've been doing this business. So I know what it can be like to be in a place where you feel really unsettled and it doesn't feel homely. Um, so maybe, maybe you don't even want to write down too much on your ID, your current situation. You just want to think, you know, if you know it's going to change soon, because my situation was they were always temporary and I knew it was going to change. So I'd always just be focusing on the ideal um, situation. So I'd start kind of manifesting that. Okay, so hopefully you've got some things down for both of those sections. Now I'm going to give you some tips on some things that you can start exploring with to create a more positive space. Um, so just jot these down and then like I said, we are going to do a little quiz as well, which is going to be really helpful for you as an individual. So the first thing is creating a vision board for your ideal home environment. Um, let me just text my mum back. <laughs> Okay, and um, create a vision board for your ideal home environment. So um, you probably already have a vision board for, for your goals and your aspirations with the business and your aspirations for life, but having a separate one just for your living space is a really, really cool thing to do because you can have different sections. You can have your workspace, you can have your kitchen, you can have your bedroom. And again, I'm going to talk more about these different rooms and how powerful it can be to focus on these rooms. Because sometimes we just go like, we, we just have one big vision. We have like the house or the, the flat where we want to live or the apartment. And we have just the overall big vision of maybe what it looks, from, looks like from the outside. And we don't go into detail on like, okay, what are the features in each of the rooms? Because they all have a different function. Um, so you, yeah, when you're making your vision, your vision board for your home environment, you might want to print off some words and feelings of how you want to feel when you're in that room. So how do you want to feel when you're in the bedroom? How do you want to feel when you're in your workspace? How do you want to feel when you're in the kitchen? You know, all of these things, because they're not going to be the same. I'd be concerned if you wanted to feel the same in each, each room. Um, and again, that's going to be individual to you. So another thing to do is fill your home with plants. Um, so if you follow me, you know that I do really enjoy my plants and it's kind of a new thing um, in the last couple of years really that I've just started adding more nature into my house because I live in the city. It's hard to be around nature. There's a lot of fumes in the air and um, even if you just go for a walk along the river it feels very dirty and very much like the city so having having that space inside my house where I can create nature is really powerful so if you don't have plants I get on Amazon after this call and just order yourself a couple of plants and some nice plant pots uh, they purify the air they boost mood and they also improve health and sharpen focus just if you wanted the science behind it there is actually science behind it uh, number three is cleaning and decluttering your living space. So obviously I spoke about it a little bit at the beginning, but having a clean home is really powerful for your health, um, physically and mentally. If you have clutter all over the floor, and I'm sure you guys can relate to this, it's happened more than once, it actually happened to me last night in the hotel because my stuff right now is everywhere, and I was getting ready to go out of the door, and I tripped over the strap of my dress and like, I, I just, I didn't fall on the floor, but I just tripped. And it's stuff like that, that then makes you go, oh, that's so annoying. And it's like, when, when, when that's happening all of the time, your subconscious is then creating that, that stress feeling again. So you, you want to declutter your space for multiple reasons. Um, if another thing, for example, is if your, your tape, your chairs are out from the table and you're trying to just walk around a room, but you're like trying to dodge chairs, it, it can actually be really unsettling. And obviously there's, there's things where you might stub your toe and stuff like that. So, um, it's not just mental benefits, it is physical benefits. 
Um, another thing that I thought was really cool is when your home is decluttered, you're more likely to be spontaneous to having people around. Um, obviously in this current situation, it's a bit more difficult, but if your house is a mess, really you're not gonna invite people around are you like if you're chatting to someone and they're like oh I haven't really got any plans tonight and your house is super clean and you feel really proud of it you might be like do you know what come around for a drink come around for a glass of wine um <laughs> this is what happens when you do calls on your birthday <laughs> um come around for a glass of wine like I, I'm gonna cook dinner or whatever you're not gonna do that if your house is a complete mess are you so um that's just something that I thought was really true and something I maybe hadn't thought about so much in the past uh, number four is lighting scented soy candles. So scented candles have been shown to promote focus and they lift your mood. And um, there's actually a link between the scents that, and the smells that you get and linking them with memories. So I don't know if um, you guys have ever had this, but an example is like if I buy a perfume that I, I used to wear maybe three or four years ago, it brings back memories of that time in my life. Like sometimes... Um, well, one really key example for me is I use the cocoa butter. Um, I can't remember the brand, but it's really amazing. And I used to use it when I did panto because um, I used to get really dry hands. And now whenever I put it on, it brings back those memories of me um, being backstage, ready to go on stage and all of that stuff. And, and I'm sure you're thinking right now of an example for you of your a perfume or a spray or a moisturizer or whatever. And it's the same with candles and scents that we have in our home. Um, so that's a really cool thing to start doing. Number five is hanging pictures throughout the house. Um, so these can really help with creativity and uh, thinking outside the box. Um, artwork has actually been shown to encourage creative thinking, boost self-esteem and increase brain connectivity. So again, there's lots of studies here. Um, you can hang pictures of your family and friends. In, in our situation, you can hang pictures of your team, of your sidelines. Um, and the pictures we choose to frame are often of us ourselves living a happy and carefree life. So you probably find that um, photos you already have around the house are of moments in your life where you are really happy and um, you look at those photos and it brings back those memories. So it's just really amazing to make sure you've got something in each room that makes you feel that way. Um, number six is a bit random, but starting a herb garden. Uh, and what I am so excited about is that we're getting the tower garden um, because we, we don't have it in the UK. And I've always been so jealous of the US because I think it is so amazing to be able to grow your own vegetables inside your, your house. Um, and especially when you live in a flat, it's amazing because I don't have a garden. So I'm really excited for that. But um, yeah, just even even growing things like your own fresh herbs, like having a little pot in the kitchen where you're growing your own basil, fresh basil. I will admit I'm not really that great at stuff like this, um, but I know that some of you will really thrive on creating that little herb garden where you can um, then use what you've grown for, for your cooking. Uh, number seven, create a cozy sleep space. So obviously we know how important sleep is for your health. It, your your sleeping space can actually really affect the way that you're sleeping so if you find right now that your sleep is a bit unsettled and you don't get a good night's sleep and you can't really figure out why it might be that your your room just needs a bit of tlc um and i've actually done this with a couple of team members before when they've told me in the past that they're not sleeping very well and i've said send me a picture of your your bedroom and they'll send me a picture of their bedroom and they've got dirty walking boots on a shelf um, and like a plastic bags, like empty plastic bags, like wet umbrellas. And yes, when I say those things out loud, you're probably thinking, oh my God, how can anyone live like that? But actually sometimes you don't even realize and you need someone to look at it with fresh eyes and go, that that's not okay. Like I, I don't like having shoes in the bedroom. I don't like having coats in the bedroom. I'm also a bit funny about having bags in the bedroom because bags pick up a lot of dirt at, at, when you're out and about. So. It's little things like that that subconsciously can be really unsettling to your sleep. Another thing actually is, um, if possible, this is a personal thing I found that's worked, is if possible, move your laundry basket to a room that's not your bedroom. Because when you're in your bedroom and you know that you've got so much dirty washing, it can subconsciously be again creating that stress. So our dirty washing is either in the bathroom or we do actually have another little cupboard. Um, and that's something that's really helped as well. 
Another thing, uh, we mentioned it quite a lot on these kind of calls for our business in particular, is making your bed in the morning. So when you get out of bed, um, always make your bed because you get that sense of accomplishment that you've already completed something before you've even really started your day. And also, if, if you're out and about and then you come home, it's so nice to come home to a nice, tidy, organized bed. Um, so that can directly improve your overall health and vitality. Uh, number eight, if you can paint your walls, add some color. I know it's not possible for everyone, so you can do things like hanging artwork or hanging tapestries, things like that. Number nine, if you watch my Instagram stories, you'll know that I do this a lot, I love it, is organizing your kitchen and your kitchen cupboards. Um, so when, when you have an organized kitchen and kitchen cupboards, you'll probably find you're more likely to cook. So I have one shelf in one of my cupboards, which is like my happy place. And I know it sounds so silly, but everything is in jars. All the jars are the same size. And like, I can see everything in there. I don't need to rummage around. And it is my favorite cupboard to go to. And um, it really does help when it comes to cooking and things like that. Like it's just so much nicer than, than rummaging through the cupboards, trying to find a tin that you don't even know if you have. And um, I'm just really funny about stuff like that. And it, it does really help, um, especially if you struggle to cook and eat well, that, that could be something to do. Um, what else do we have? Okay, thank, it says my internet connection is unstable. Hopefully you can still hear me okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, fine. Um, and number 10, which we will in explore a little bit more if we have time, is exploring Feng Shui. So how many of you guys just put in the chat bar, have you heard of um, Feng Shui before? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, it keeps cutting out. Okay. Hopefully you can hear me enough to get all of the points. If not, um, I can always log in on my phone or I'll send them after anyway. I'll read them all out one more time. Okay, so um, Feng Shui we'll look at a little bit more in a bit, but I'm just gonna read out all 10 of those in case you missed any. So number one was creating a vision board for your home environment. Number two, fill your home with houseplants. Number three, clean and declutter your living space. Number four, light scented soy candles. Number five, hang pictures throughout your home. Number six, start a herb garden. Number seven, create a cozy sleep space. Number eight, paint your walls. Number nine, organize your pantry. And number 10, explore Feng Shui. Okay. So then I just want you to write down in your self development book so you can share it in the chat bar as well three to five ways that you can improve your current home environment. So just three to five things that you can start doing. So what's really interesting is ultimately where you, where you live, your living space is a reflection of who you want to be and how you want to be seen in the world. Um, and when you look inside someone's house, it really is kind of looking into their soul. Like you can kind of tell what, what sort of person they are, like what thoughts are going through their head, how they're living just by looking at someone's house. So by creating a space that really inspires you and, and you feel proud of, and you've given it that time, you've prioritized it, um, it can really help in, in so many ways. It's almost like you're, you're manifesting who you, who you know that you are and the higher version of you like you're manifesting it through your your house and your living space um yeah and things change things change all the time you know something that really fulfills you right now in five years time it may not and that is also normal so has everyone written down three to five things they can do to improve their home environment yeah amazing Okay, we're going to move on now to what's called like a clean sweep. So taking regular clean sweeps of your home or work environment can be an important component of overall wellness. 
So I don't know if anyone's watched things like Marie Kondo or Netflix. Um, I've watched a little bit of it. It's really cool. But stuff like that, like it, it really shows you the value of cleaning and how important it is for, for your health. Um, decluttering the mind, boosting productivity, reduces stress feelings. And um, it's really powerful if, you, if you've never done it before. So what we're going to do is a little self-assessment and the four main areas of this self-assessment are physical environment, money, well-being and relationships. So physical environment, money, well-being and relationships. They're the main four areas we're going to look at and how they link to your home. So this assessment that we're going to do, you might want to do it quite a lot throughout the year. Um, it, it, like I said, it's definitely something that won't happen overnight. It won't happen in a month. Um, I mean, you can even kind of set yourself a goal of che checking off everything by the end of 2021. So not only do you have a year, but you have an extra, what, like two months because you've got the rest of this year. And that's a really good goal to set yourself is to complete all of this um, by the end of next year. And you'll, you'll see what I mean in a minute when I send it through. So I'm going to send it now. Um, copy that. Ooh. Okay, there we go. So you should be able to open that now. <clears throat> and um, yeah, it's a really good tool to just kind of look at things that you can start doing individually. And um, you, your goal is to reach a score of 100 but obviously like I said it, it could take time and to set yourself a goal of completing it by the end of next year would be a really amazing goal and I would love to know how you get how you get on with doing that as well um, so we're going to do this all together um, you might think that it's really impossible to reach 100 you might think god there's no way I could ever do all of that but just remember it's one simple change like one one better a better habit um, every week or every month and that will give you the long-term results so I'll play some music let me know if there's any problems with accessing that assessment and um, let me know when you've completed it you just want to basically tick off the um, true box if the statement is always true for you I am going to play some music. By the way, if the statement doesn't apply to you, um, then you can also tick it. So if it's just not relevant, then you can tick it, that's fine. So I've just resumed the recording. Um, if you're watching this back and you can't find the link to complete the assessment, then um, just comment on the post or reach out to me and I can forward it to you. Um, but we're just gonna do a little bit of a reflection now. So just if you can share just a little bit about how you found doing that, that assessment, like did it open your mind to anything? Did it make you feel anything? Um, was there anything that you were changed? Like does it, do you think that that represents is a good representation of overall health and happiness? Um, I find it really interesting because sometimes I think that I'm, I'm really content and happy with my life and, and I am, but then there's things that I look at and I go, do you know what? That actually does cause me more stress or aggravation than I even thought. And I've never really made the link. I've just never seen it really as that important. So it's cool to do stuff like this. Um, yeah. Like Charlotte said, stuff she'd never considered before. Um, shocked by my score, a lot of things to sort out, open my eyes, okay, amazing. And it's really important to remember that 
we're not going to be able to just sort things out, you know, straight away. Like it's just doing one thing at a time. And um, I think it says at the beginning of the assessment to do this quite regularly. And you want to be aiming to just have a higher score each time you do it. And yes, you're aiming for a hundred overall, but just improving it every time you do it is amazing. Um, and start with the easy stuff. Start with the stuff that gives you the path of least resistance, the stuff that is kind of the easiest thing for you to change. You know, don't, don't look at the overwhelming thing and go, right, I need to tackle that because you're going to end up just procrastinating. So start really, really small. I need to do a lot of those, a lot you haven't thought about. Yeah, great. Pro surprised with my wellbeing score. Yeah. Yeah, it's powerful. Like when I was just doing it then, um, which one was it I was looking at? It was just little things, you know, like um, organizing receipts. Like I'm, I'm usually super organized with receipts, but this year I've just been putting everything into one envelope instead of having a filing system for, for all of it. And actually, yes, it, yes, every time I go to look at that paperwork, it <laughs> overwhelms me a bit. But when I sit here and I think, do you know what? It's actually so many times that that has happened where I could have just bought a filing cabinet and it would have made my life so much easier. So um, again, it's all going to be individual for you, but it just, it does open up your mind. Okay. Next question then is, how do you feel about your score? And you can share this or you can just write it in your own self-development book is how does your score make you feel? So what emotions come into your head straight away? Like how, how does your score make you feel? Don't think about it too much. Just write down the words that come to your head, even if they don't really make sense. Uh, just write them down. How do you feel? How do you feel? And yeah, you can share in the chat bar, but if you want to keep it to yourself, um, then that's totally fine. It's okay to feel a bit disappointed because this might be the first time you've kind of opened up your eyes to what you can change in your life. And, and that, that's okay to feel those feelings of disappointment of maybe even guilt or shame. You know, that, that's normal to feel like that. If this is the first time you've done it, that, that most likely is the strongest emotion. But what I want you to realize is that that's normal and that's okay. So, so then don't go down the route of feeling bad because you feel guilty and, and go down that downward spiral. Go, okay, well, I'm going to change one thing to make me feel a little bit better. And, and be excited that when, when that score is higher, you're going to feel completely different. And that's what you've got to have the vision of is the longer term vision of where you're going to be once you start working on these things. Yeah, Kasha, I feel excited to change things to improve my score. Yeah, amazing. Um, shock, disappointed, needs to change a lot. Like I said, that's normal. And also, if your score is quite low and you're thinking, I need to change so much in my life, just be careful of the vocabulary that you use. So I need to change is actually quite damaging to our self-worth. Whereas if you say something like, I could make this change or I could make that change, that's more empowering rather than punishing yourself. Like, oh, I'm, I just, I'm not good enough. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to be better. That's probably the worst thing we can say to ourselves is I need to be better. We are all doing the very best we can in life. Okay. You have to remember that like you are doing your very best. And when you realize that you're doing your best and you remind yourself that you're doing your best, you'll be a lot more loving to yourself. Your, your, your life is the way it is because of decisions that you've made, but also things that have happened to you that you may not have had control with and you just might not have had the self-awareness and the self-development to be able to handle them in the right way. And yes, some of that you're in control of and yes, some of that you're not. So you can't blame yourself for feeling and, and experiencing the things that you do and for having the situations in your life that you have, um, especially in those areas, relationships, money, you know, but what you what you can do is you can change you can change your fate for the next five, ten, twenty years. You can change it. You can start changing it today. And hopefully this assessment gives you something that you can start changing. And this is the next question is what is one item that you would like to work on this week and how are you going to work on it? So just one thing that you're going to work on this week and what are you going to do?
Okay, hopefully you've all written something down quickly. Just comment down once you've done that, once you've written something down. Okay, some of you have shared, that's amazing. Arrange over to eyesight test, yep. It's always the health ones that we seem to neglect, which is crazy, but we do it. Like the dentist checkups, going for an overall checkup at the doctors. Like when was the last time you went and just got everything tested, even though you feel healthy, you know? Um, eyesight test, exactly. I have mine recently for the same reason. Um, and pay for the extras, you know, they, they always ask like, do you want the, I think it's glaucoma, like, do you want to pay 10 pounds more for that test? And old me would have been like, no, no, I'll save the money. But actually now I'm like, your, your health is an investment. And to walk out knowing that everything is okay, everything is good is really, really powerful. So don't be afraid to just spend that little bit more money on, on yourself. Um, having a good morning routine, getting up earlier, sorting out paperwork being proactive instead of reactive daily schedule okay these are all amazing and i'd love to hear how you get on with these things as well i really would okay we're going to move on really quickly to feng shui so feng shui is an ancient chinese art form used to create greater health wealth and happiness um i'll actually read out this whole par paragraph because it's interesting this improved wellness through feng shui is created by organizing an environment in a way that enhances the flow of life force or chi. I don't know how to say that. I think it's chi. So chi is life-giving energy that unites our body, mind, and spirit. Through this art of placement, feng shui provides a space that allows chi to flow most naturally. There are many techniques for advancing enhancing the energy flow in an environment and one is through five elements wood fire earth metal and water which i'm sure you've heard before and feng shui actually literally translates to wind and water that's the literal um, translation of feng shui is wind and water so there's quite a lot here i'm going to read out um just some things that you can do to start improving um your home environment using feng shui and again the topics are money health and love so the three main topics money health and love so out of those three if you could just share in the chat uh, i can't speak share in the chat bar i said chair in the chat bar <laughs> um which one of those four topics is the one that really is resonating with you like that's a, that's a struggle area for me um out of money health and love money oh so with the assessment you don't get your results you just add it up yourself so just add up the score for each section um money 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 love money we've got lots of monies okay and maybe some of you it's different and you don't want to share um that's fine as well what i would do is write down in your self-development book under this section is which one for you is really like your your um stress point i'm going to go through i'm not going to repeat these each time um because it will take ages so as i'm reading them out just pick the one that that is really resonating with you and just write that one down because the one that the one that sticks in your brain the most is going to be the one that is most powerful for you as an individual so let's start with money so get your pen and paper ready so these are things that you can start doing to improve these areas of your life using feng shui so um a first impression will set the tone so make the entrance to your place of living really beautiful so your doorbell should work properly for one and the number on your home should be visible so abundance can find you so if you have a number on your front door and it's rusty and it maybe is hidden by plants or it's really old or it was there before you moved in go and get yourself a new number get it up on your door and um, make sure that it can be seen so abundance can find you okay number two fix any leaks in your home as they represent financial leaks so keeping your home stable will support your financial stability and growth okay so that's number two Number three, close your toilet lid when it's not in use. 
like leaks, the toilet represents flushing things away. So you don't want money to be one of those things. Keep the lid closed to keep your finances protected and attract more abundance. Next one, explore subconscious beliefs about money. Do you believe that money is scarce? Do you think that you have to work really hard just to make ends meet? Do you feel as though there's not enough money to go around as money limited? And replace those thoughts with positive affirmations. For example, abundance comes easily to me through different channels or things like I am a money magnet. I have more money coming in than going out. And I've had affirmations like that on my vision board for over a year and all of them have come true. All of them have come true. And this time last year, I'll tell you this really, really quickly. This time last year, I was struggling. I was really struggling. Um, I just kind of come back from Australia. I was finding my feet again. Um, I had to I had all my student debt to deal with that I'd run away to Australia to avoid dealing with. So when I came back, I was like, right now I need to sort this out. And I had a spreadsheet and I was counting every single penny that went into that spreadsheet and where it was going to the point where if I was working and I hadn't made my, my lunch and I bought a meal deal, that meal deal would be on the spreadsheet and it would be broken down into the three items. So having these affirmations can transform your wealth. Like, I don't know, well, those of you that are in XXY, you'll know, um, earlier in this year, I was manifesting so much money, it was crazy. Like, I manifested, I'll tell you really quickly, I manifested 300 pounds from an incentive in one month, 100 pounds from an incentive another month, another 100 pound voucher another month, and then I won 100 pound from John Holowasi another month. And I honestly can't, cannot tell you like what specific things I did, did to get there other than affirmations and manifestation. It's crazy. So if you haven't started doing it, start doing it. Okay, next. Get creative by incorporating photographs or paintings of flowing water, running horses, or moving boats in your home as these images represent flow and abundance. Kasha, I just saw you turn around. Is that actually like a waterfall? Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. I love that. Um, so if you don't have images like that, then get some. I'm just trying to plug my laptop in because um, I might run out of battery. Okay, um, so those things were flowing water, running horses or moving boats in your home. Next one, keep your wallet organized to show that you respect money and that you spend it wisely. So try buying a brightly colored wallet in red, green or purple tones, as these are said to attract financial abundance, um, which I find really interesting. I've never actually done that before, but I might get one of those little, um, little uh, card holders in red, green or purple, because when I go to the gym and stuff like that, I usually just take a single card and I lose it everywhere. Um, I leave it on the, I leave it on the gym benches. I leave it, uh, God knows where, I leave it all the time. So having a little something, if you don't want a bright red purse or a bright green, like full purse, you could get a little something. Um, your stove actually represents abundance. So keep your stove clean and use all of the burners equally. Utilizing each burner opens a variety of opportunities and financial channels. Okay, so they were all of the things for money. So just um, jot down any that really stood out to you and then we're gonna move on to health. So in the health section, to improve your flow using Feng Shui when it comes to area of health, um, choose wooden bed frames if you can, as metal, metal bed frames attract electromagnetic waves from technology and that can actually affect your sleep. So wooden is always best if you can. Clear out clutter in your living space. Um, have a great mattress that supports your body and it allows you to have deep rest and restoration. Uh, same with pillows and duvets, make sure that they are functioning well. Um, if your pillows are getting a bit flat, invest in some new pillows. You can actually get some really good ones from Groupon uh, that aren't that, exp that expensive and they're hotel quality. Keep your space soft with calming yin colors like beige. Don't use bright or harsh tones. So you wanna keep it really calm. Pay attention to the airflow in your living space. Put in fans for air and energy movement and plants for air purification. 
Reserve your bedroom for sleeping and sex only. So no work or papers in the bedroom, get them out. I know some of you have to work in your bedroom um, for whatever reason, but just be clever with your space. So have um, like filing cabinets where you can put all of your work away every evening. When I was working, when I was in a shared house and I was building my business in my bedroom, I had, I had a drawer underneath the desk and every single night, everything would go away. All of my notebooks, all of my pens, all of my notes. I throw away any scrap bits of paper, but everything else would go inside the drawer. And when I say I throw scrap bits of paper away, I don't just put them in an empty waste bin. I will actually take them out of the room um, before you go to sleep. So things like that. Uh, tune out and unplug. So electromagnetic fields affect your sleep. So keep the electronics, including TVs, if possible, out of the bedroom. Um, I know it's really hard with phones is something I am still really struggling with is to get my phone out of the bedroom. But I am trying to look at different alarm clocks that I can use so that my phone is off. It's in the kitchen and I turn it on. Something I've been doing to transition, by the way, um, if this is also something you struggle with is switching um not switching off but not looking at your phone past i actually don't do it past half nine but you could do it past 10 in the evening or 11 in the evening and then in the morning not looking at it before a certain time so just making sure you have at least an hour in the morning of away from your phone so whatever time it is you get up whether it's five six seven eight a.m just having an hour of no phone and then go on your phone it's quite a nice way to transition Okay, last section is love. So things that you can do to improve the flow of love in your home. Throw away dead flowers. You don't want any dead flowers. You don't want dirty water, get them out. Um, keep candles in your bedroom to create romantic ambiance. Keep your bed linens clean, fresh and crisp. I find washing bed sheets once a week actually really helps for the week ahead. So doing it on a Sunday, um, there's no better feeling than having a shower, feeling really good and getting into fresh pajamas and fresh bed sheets. Um, so if you don't do that already, then, then start doing that because it's amazing. Uh, meditate daily to clear your mind. And then a couple of just random, random things. Um, well, I say random, but they are really powerful, but maybe things you haven't thought about before is putting two roses next to your bed and visualize what they mean for you in terms of calling in love. So if this is an area in your life that you struggle with, you feel like there's a lack of love and the flow isn't just really happening in that area, maybe just putting two roses next to your bed will help attract that into your life. Um, and then another thing is, again, if you're trying to attract love into your life, is only sleeping on one side of your bed and clearing out a few dresser drawers to make space for your partner. So if you think about this in more detail, it's like if you are trying to find someone, you're trying to attract love, you're trying to build a relationship, attract a relationship, attract a relationship, but you're sleeping in your bed and you're sleeping as if you're the only one there, then subconsciously your brain's probably thinking, you know, if you, if you find someone that you are then thinking about taking that relationship further with, there's all of these thoughts in your head, like, well, I quite like having the bed to myself. Like if they sleep in my bed for a long period of time, they're going to have to sleep on one side. Like I might not sleep as well. Um, where are they going to put their stuff? And all of these things that you might not necessarily realize you're even thinking about it, but creating that space before it happens is really powerful. So if you are trying to improve this area, they're, they're two really interesting things I think to start doing is, um, and I'll just repeat it one more time, is putting two roses next to your bed and visualizing what they mean for you in terms of calling in love. And the second one is sleeping on one side of your bed and clearing out a few dresser drawers to make space for your partner. Okay, so there's some little feng shui, feng shui tips for you there. Um, I hope this call has been really helpful. Like I said, we're not gonna do the high paying activities today, but there's a whole lot of information and hopefully there's some stuff there that you can now go away with and, and um, bring into your life. And, and it, remember as well, it's small, small daily changes. Like you're not gonna be able to do everything straight away and it's just 
one small win at a time and be proud of yourself no matter how big or small that is maybe today you just go and get a couple of roses and put them next to your bed or maybe today you just do a big dust up or you put some paper away or throw away scrap paper like they're all wins so celebrate those um yeah and i'm gonna go now um and enjoy the rest of my birthday thank you so much for your messages um, I will upload this into the page. I probably will do it when I'm back in Bath early in the week. So if any of your team weren't able to catch up with the record, um, weren't able to watch this call and want to catch up with the recording, just let them know. And I will see you guys soon. I'm just going to end the, the recording.